you so very much for tuning in here today at Church on the Rock. If this is your first time, let me encourage you to go to JesusOfTheRock.org. There you can find out all sorts of information on our ministries, or you can give to our church financially by clicking on the giving button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. Again, thank you for joining us, and welcome to Church on the Rock. If you have your Bibles, turn to Judges chapter 6. I'm going to kind of get off the beaten path a little bit. Um, I'm not going to talk about the prodigal son, or I'm not going to talk about um, love and mercy and the great commandment Jesus left us with to love others the way he loves us and forgiving one another and not judging. Those things are kind of my mantra. They, they usually work themselves into just about every sermon, and they may slip in here somewhere, but uh, I really want to teach preach a little bit this morning. Um, I was reading this past week over in the book of Judges, and I came across this little story, and it reminded me really of an illustration that I'm going to share with you this morning, something that happened to me uh, at work in my other job. I work with hospice over in Mobile as a chaplain, and so I had a kind of an experience there, and so between the two, I just started writing down a few things, and I'm going to share it with you this morning. Now, we're going to read out of Judges 6 in a few minutes, but um, you don't have to turn there, but in Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 23, it says that all things are possible if we can only believe. Sometimes we quote that so much or see it or hear it, I think we quit hearing it. All things are possible if you can only believe. Say that with me one time. All things are possible if you can only believe. So the problem is not this is impossible. The problem is I can't believe, right? Because all things are possible. One scripture says God's arms are not short. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? So I want to spend a few minutes this morning talking about fleecing the Lord or putting out a fleece. Now, we don't hear as much today uh, about putting out a fleece before the Lord as we did, say, even... 20 years ago, or at least I don't, that got really popular back in the 80s and 90s. It was something that you just, it seemed like it sort of become a common thing for people to put out a fleece to the Lord, or as the kids say back in the 1900s. That's when really I guess I became aware of what a fleece really was. And um, So what is a fleece? Strangely, I was in my office this week, and a couple of the youth came in, and we were just chatting and talking, and, and one of them said, what you preaching on this Sunday, Pastor? And I said, I'm going to preach on uh, fleecing the Lord, and I'm going to talk about what is a fleece. And I said, you guys know what a fleece is? And one of them said, it's like a piece of wool, isn't it? Or like kind of a wool shirt. And I said, exactly. I said, now, You've, you've said more than you know because that's exactly what a fleece is. Now, fleece has come to mean some other things. I said, you know, a fleece has sort of come to mean um, whenever we test the Lord or we prove the Lord or we, we're asking for direction. And so we say, Lord, if you want me to do this, then make this happen. And, and one of them looked at me and said, that ain't right. And I said, well, that's what we're going to talk about Sunday, whether it's right or wrong, good or bad, um, great faith or no faith, whatever the case is. I said, but that's what we're going to talk about. Um, so we get the word fleece right here out of the book of Judges, and we're going to read it in a moment. And today we really sort of misuse the word. I'm going to give you a little bitty quick history lesson in way of example uh, of how the word is misused. But somebody tell me what this is. Anybody else take a stab? Shout it out. Press it, Rich. Are we all agreed on that? Okay. Well, you're wrong, all of you. That's not a crescent wrench. That's called an adjustable wrench because you can open it up, you can close it up. The Crescent Tool Company was founded in Jamestown, New York, 1907 by Carl Peterson. And the most famous tool they ever come out with was the adjustable wrench. I'm not sure if they were the inventor of it or not. I think they were. But if they weren't, they were certainly the first mass producers of it and mass marketers of it. 
Today, however, there are hundreds of companies who manufacture and distribute adjustable wrenches. Craftsman does. Uh, well, it just uh, the list would go on and on and on of tool companies that create, build, manufacture, and sell adjustable wrenches. And yet, when we look at one and we say, what is it? Everybody says, that's a crescent wrench. No, it's not. There are still some crescent wrenches at home. I actually have one at home that's made by the Crescent Company. There are also many, many hundreds and thousands that are made by other companies. It's a Craftsman adjustable wrench. Um, we, we do this with we we do this with with things we do this with Coke. Somebody says you want a Coke? Sure. Well, you might get a Dr Pepper, a Sprite, a root beer, right? But we just sort of say that's a Coke. It's a carbonated drink. It's it's a soft drink or a soda, but not necessarily a Coke. And some folks get upset if you try to pass off a Pepsi or something for a Coke, right? I I never could tell the difference. I don't I don't drink them anyway, but. Um, now, we do the same thing with the fleece. For example, somebody may pray and say, Lord, if you really want me to take that job, let it be raining in the morning. That's a fleece. That's a, that's, this is how I'll know because I don't know whether to take it or not. Lord, if, if, if you don't want me to go on that trip, let my tire be flat in the morning. That's a fleece. It's putting God to the test. It's asking for direction, and it's saying, if you want this, and then some, some of them we get kind of really wacky, especially if it's something we really don't want to do. We say, Lord, if you, uh, if you want me to go to church tomorrow, uh, let there be a bird sitting on my porch with an olive branch in his mouth wearing a little bitty Atlanta Braves hat and sunglasses. And if I see that, I'll know I'm supposed to go. I think that's what happened this morning. That's one of the downsides of living on the Gulf Coast on beautiful Sundays. Folks have church on the boat. Um, but that, that's what a fleece is. And that's what we call fleecing the Lord or putting out a fleece to the Lord. Personally, I believe that many people use the fleece to get out of doing what they already know they should be doing. Um, but we're asking the Lord to prove himself. Show me. Make yourself known to me. Although the word fleece doesn't really mean that, we've come to associate the word with a principle, sort of like the crescent wrench. Now, I've got to get back to Judges over here. Here's where we get this from. Judges chapter 6, verse 36, Then Gideon said to God, If you are truly going to use me to rescue Israel as you promised, prove it to me this way. I will put a wool fleece, piece of cloth, a garment, something, a wool fleece on the threshing floor tonight. If the fleece is wet with dew in the morning, but the ground is dry, then I'll know that you're going to help rescue Israel as you promised. And that is just what happened. When Gideon got up early the next morning, he squeezed out the fleece and wrung out a whole bowl full of water. So then Gideon said to God, now don't get angry at me. But let me make one more request. Let's use the fleece for one more test. This time, let the fleece remain dry while the ground all around is wet. So that night, God did as Gideon asked. The fleece was dry in the morning, but the ground was covered with dew. So, the piece of wool cloth that Gideon used to prove God was called a fleece. That's what it was. Hence, every time we throw out a challenge to God to prove himself, we call it a fleece. It's not a fleece any more than that's a crescent wrench, but that's what we call it. Now, I didn't come this morning to give you a history of the crescent wrench or even really a history of the fleece, but I do want you to understand what it is we're talking about when we use the word fleece. Basically, it simply means to prove God, to test God, to offer God a challenge or to ask him for some sort of sign to make sure that we're going in the right directions. In verse 36, Gideon said to God, if you're truly going to use me to rescue Israel as you promised, prove it to me in this way. That's a fleece. It's what we call a fleece. Now, some people 
tend to associate offering God a fleece or a challenge with great faith. It's almost sort of a watch this. I'm going to ask the Lord to do this, and I have so much faith, I can ask God to do anything, and he'll do it. And, and so some people will throw out a fleece as sort of a badge of their faith or their super spirituality or something. I, on the other hand, while I believe in the fleece and I've watched God honor the fleece on several occasions, I don't see it as a great act of faith. In fact, if anything, I see it as a lack of faith. I see it when God answers a fleece like he did here.
Again, we're so incredibly glad you decided to join us here today at Church on the Rock. Now, if this message blessed you in any way, let us hear about it. You can email pray at jesusoftherock.org or you can look us up on Facebook or Twitter, Church on the Rock, Pascagoula. Now, I pray that God shows you awesome ways to apply this message to your everyday life.